uh, two, three. Okay, so we are from Group G. So to, the topic today is the solar thermal water. And my name is Elvin, and I'm the leader of the group. So my team members will be Nuru Hasni, Muhammad Harris, and also Hokian. So first, we'd like to have a short introduce about what is the solar thermal water. So solar thermal water is actually a method that to capture the sunlight and use to heat the water. So it can be an economic way to generate hot water actually for the family, usually used for the shower and bath. And it enables the sustainable energy saving and uh, as the solar power we know it uh, is free. And also it is a way to produce hot water for sanitary use and throughout the year without emitting any CO2 as compared to using the traditional way by heating the water which uh, produced to uh, contribute to the CO2 relation. So the next is the policy toward the solar thermal in Malaysia. So as what we found is that a GEF also known as the Global Environment Facility and UNIDO, also United National Industrial Development Organization, they have go through the activity and they are named it as the GHG, which is the Greenhouse Gas Emission Reduction in Target Industrial Subsector, uh, Subsector through Energy Efficiency and Application of Solar Thermal System. So basically what they do is to narrow down the gap faced by the solar thermal in Malaysia. So there are four components have been highlighted and they are target to finish it, uh, achieve it by the five year. So the first is development of regulation framework in support program and financial incentive mechanism to the facilitate solar thermal energy utilization. So they are giving awareness rising and capacity building program that related to the process, heating and cooling, optimization and solar thermal energy utilization. So there are, uh, there are also demonstration and scaling up of sector specific energy efficiency and solar thermal energy utilization in target industrial subsectors. So the last one is to monitoring and evaluation. And beside that, they also done that a uh, national shareholder workshop also being organized by the Searing. Searing is known as the uh, organization that they are take care of our electric, electric uh, uh, components. So they are implementing agents for the GEF Unido. Uni Uni so solar thermal industrial national project to discuss all the components with other shareholders from industrial and government ministry and agency. So other than that, there are something that we have to know is that anytime we installing something electrical or something electric instrument, we have to follow the act of Electricity Supply Act 1990 and also the Electricity Regulation 1995. So even if we're installing the solar uh, heater, we also have to follow the rules because we have to use the sum or minor electricity. And for the IXO 90, uh, 9459 to 1995, this is actually a standard. The standard for the domestic water heating system performance, which means that when you're using the domestic water heating system, you have to fulfill the performance required in this ISO. And last one is the 5G policy. I know that uh, which we all have been go through, which is encouraged to using the utilization of the renewable sources. So I will pass to my teammate for the next slide. Oh, so thermal water system, uh, there are two major types, which are active system and passive system. And under active system, we have uh, open loop or direct system and closed loop, which is indirect system. And under passive system, we have integral collector storage, CS, and thermal siphon. Next. For the first type of open loop under active system, the water will be heated in the collector panels and goes back to the storage tank. And the pump will collect the house water from storage tank through the collector into the home. This type of water, water heater will function well in the climates that really freeze. And this type of system it requires high maintenance and minimal water tolerance. The 
Active type and the active system is closed loop. For this type of system, the pump will circulate the fluid through the collector panels and absorb the heat. Then it will carry this heat to a heat exchanger in the hot, in the hot water cylinder. This is where the heat is transferred to the water and it will flow into the home. The system has excellent freeze protection and good hard water tolerance. Next. Then we go to the passive system. The first type and the passive system is thermosiphon. The collector uh, in this type of system must be installed below the storage tank. The warm water will rise into the tank. Then the water will flow through the system when warm water rises as cooler water sinks. <coughs> the system has no freeze protection and minimal water tolerance, but requires low maintenance. And the last step is ICS. The water in the ICS is being heated by the sunlight and when the hot water being draw, the, the normal hot water pressure will push heated water from the ICS into standard electric. ICS has moderate freeze protection and pipes at risk, but it requires very low maintenance and minimal hot water tolerance. Next. Right invite Harris to continue the presentation. Okay, thank you Asnis. For the categories of uh, thermal collector, we have three categories of uh, thermal collector. The first category is low temperature for uh, thermal collector. Under low temperature, we have angles mats for water heating and perforated plates for air preheating. For the mid temperature for thermal collector, we have glass and insulated collectors. And the last uh, category is high temperature category, which is which are we have evacuated tube and for casing collector. Next. Uh, for application of uh, temperature in Malaysia, generally we have solar water heating system that been used by household such as shower and bath. It also be used for specific industrial sector. Okay, for application for a lot of picture uh, thermal water collector, we have we can see in swimming pool, battery ponds, ventilation preheat, car wash, and snow melting. For mid temperature, we can see the application in residential and commercial hot water, cafeterias, laundries, and daycare. For high temperature, we can see the application at industrial processes, electrical generation, and it often used for water and spray heating. Yes. Okay, I would like to invite Anis members to present about the case of the collector. Next is about the efficiency of the collector. So, what is the efficiency? Efficiency is the energy collected by the solar thermal water system divided by the in situ solar. So this is the formula. The solar efficiency is equal to useful heat over the in situ solar radiation, which in watt per meter square times with the collector area meter square. So next one is about the energy collector is equal to optical gains minus the thermal losses and this is the formula the transmiss the transmissivity of the cover glass times with the absorptivity of the absorber plate times with the incident solar radiation and the collector area minus with thermal loss coefficient of collector times with collector area and the th temperature difference of the storage water and the outdoor ambient temperature. And here we can get the final form of the thermal efficiency. I'm oh, sorry, it's solar efficiency. It's equal to transmissivity times with absorptivity minus the 
thermal loss coefficient of connector times with the temperature difference over the <coughs> incident solar radiation. And now we will discuss a sample situation to calculate the cost effectiveness. So assume that the building in Denver uses electricity to heat water. The sample building group is four ballets, each housing 120 soldiers for a total of 480 soldiers, with a whole water use rate of 30 gallon or 114 liters per day per person. The whole water use would be 14,400 gallon or 54,000 liter per day. The heating energy to make this hot water is okay. This is the sample calculation to calculate the daily load or the heat energy. So we will use the 14,400 gallon per day times with the temperature difference, which is 14, uh, which, sorry, which is the 140 Fahrenheit minus 60 Fahrenheit times with one, one PTU over B bra over Fahrenheit times with 8.3 B bra over gallon over 3,413 PTU over kilowatt per hour and we get 2,800 kilo hour per day. Next one is to calculate the solar water system size. So we may estimate the collector size using the following equation. Okay, AC, AC is the collector area in meter square. It's equal to the daily load kilowatt per day over the solar efficiency times with the maximum daily solar radiation. So L, which is the Q we calculate from the previous calculation, 2,800 kilowatt hour per day over the 0 0.4. And this equation, we assume the solar efficiency is equal to 0 0.4. And we put the IMAX is equal to 6.1 kilowatt hour per meter square per day, which this IMAX is really depends on the climate of the year. Okay, okay, also we can say that this IMAX is the system is designed to make the load on the sunniest day of the year, which eliminates excess capacity and optimizes the economic performance. So by using that value, we get the collector area is equal to 1,148 meters square. Next, we used to find the annual energy saving. So at this example, we use the electricity as our energy to estimate the annual energy saving. So annual energy saving is equal to collector area times with average solar radiation times with solar efficiency times 365 days over boiler efficiency. So the collector area is equal to 1,000 and I'm sorry, 1,148 meters square times with, and this sample we use 5.5 kilowatt per meter square per day times with 0.4 times 365 days over the 0 0.88. Okay, so we can get the value is about 1 million and 48,000 kilowatt hour per year. So, so why we use 0 0.88 for the boiler efficiency? Because what I say just now, we use the electricity. So we can see this typical auxiliary heater efficiency 
for the electricity, we will assume the value is 0 0.88. So we determine to choose 0 0.88 in this operation. Okay, next one is to calculate the annual cost saving. So the annual cost saving can be estimated using the following equation. S is the annual cost saving, which is unit is called a dollar per year equal to annual energy saving times with cost of exterior energy. So the energy, sorry, the annual energy saving, the 1 million for the 8,000 kilowatt hour per year times with 0 0.084 over, oh, sorry, 0 0.084 dollar per kilowatt hour is equal to $88,000 per year. So we use 0 0.084 because the energy we use is belong to electricity. So the next one is to calculate the cost of the solar system. So the solar system cost can be estimated using the following equation. C is the solar system cost and equal to C solar. C solar is per unit area cost of installed solar system times with collector area. So the solar, oh sorry, so the C solar we use here is $650 per meter square. We assume the solar system we use is belong to the last system. So we use $650 per meter square times with the collector area, 1,148 meter square is equal to 746,000 dollar. So the next one is to calculate the saving to investment ratio. The saving to investment ratio can be calculated using the following equation, SIR, is equal to annual cost saving S times with PWF present world factor over solar system cost C. So S is equal to $88,000 per year times with 24. The 24 here is equal to present world factor for 40 year lifetime and over the solar system cost which is the $746,000. So finally we get the saving to investment ratio is equal to 2.8 which means this project is cost effectively since the saving to is when savings to investment ratio is bigger than one. So we may say that this project is cost effective. And now I will give my another team member to conduct. Okay, for require, requirement for success, we have three requirements to achieve the goals. First, the requirement is properly sized, which is oversized or not oversized. Second requirement is provide a reasonable payback. The third requirement is appropriate application. Next is a personal indication of monitoring. And the last requirement for the access is redundant risk protection. So, in terms of conclusion, we would like to conclude that the solar water heater system might have high initial costs. However, is beneficial in protecting from bill electricity increment year by year in the future. So it reduces the pollutants and also contribute to a more healthier environment. So in Malaysia, the solar thermal can be a good replacement to the fossil fuel electricity generation due to its efficiency and renewable energy source. And in a nutshell, is an intelligent, social aware and environmental friendly, response, environmentally responsible energy source.
Thank you.